Nutrition can prove to be a controversial subject here on GCN. And one part of it in particular stokes an awful lot of debate, more than disc brakes, more than sock length, more even than Lance Armstrong. And it is veganism. And in particular, can you be a vegan professional cyclist? So we thought we'd try and tackle this one head on. We're on our way to meet a nutritionist who's been working with World Tour teams and professional cyclists for a number of years now. And most recently, they've been investigating athletes on plant-based diets. Let's tackle the burning question head on then. Can you be a vegan professional cyclist? It's a really interesting question that. And uh, uh, part of the whole idea for me looking at plant-based nutrition and vegan nutrition is, is this something that a professional athlete can do? And I 100% believe that somebody could be a vegan professional cyclist. The questions are is how they go about it to ensure that the practice doesn't compromise anything with their performance. You know, we know, and you know, we know from conversations with you in the past as well that actually protein is an important part of an athlete's diet. Now, is it a case of quality proteins, i.e., dairy and meat have you know protein profiles that that are more similar to to our own, or is it that actually it's a quantity issue? With protein, we've got these amino acids, the building blocks, and what we have is we've got the different amino acids, and some of these are what we call essential. In other words we need to get these from the diet, and then the rest of them, the body converts some of the others into the other amino acids. So if we're not getting those essential amino acids from our foods, then it will compromise the quality of what it can do in the body. But that doesn't mean to say that we can't get these essential amino acids from non-meat and dairy foods. My, my belief with it at the, at the moment still is that what we need to look at doing is looking at getting a range of foods, a range of protein foods, so it gives us this range of amino acids. We kind of know roughly what to aim for from a, a proportional aspect in our diets, you know, carbohydrates to proteins, whatever. But is that going to be difficult then on a plant-based diet? We can get there. If we're, um, if we're an active athlete and we're uh, using in the region of, let's say, 4,000 calories a day, then there'd be no problems at all in getting the, the amount of protein that we require from plant-based foods. So I, I'm, I believe fully that somebody, if somebody wants to be a professional cyclist, the challenge isn't around getting the foods the challenge will be is when they're away at races, being able to maintain that or when they're traveling. But I would say that there is certain supplements that I would also suggest that your, uh, your vegan cyclist would, would consider taking. But these would be probably the same sort of products that I'd get somebody to consider who was not a vegan as well. Is this something that you've started to change your thinking on recently or is it you know, something that's, that's always been out there, you know, you, you'd, be, you'd have been happy if I'd asked you this question 10 years ago, you'd have given me the same answer. I've always been interested in things that are a little bit different and uh, my wife's been vegetarian for 30 years and I do all the cooking at home so I've always had to supply <coughs> vegetarian cooking for my wife. But I got more interested in it from a sports point of view, really through some of the work that I've done with you guys with GCN, where we've done we've done videos and we've spoke about recovery. And the thing I've always spoke about is the importance of things like dairy and chicken and things like that. And quite rightly, people have gone, hang on a second, there's other proteins about there as well. So that really got me thinking more around alternatives to that. And that challenge, and from a scientific point of view, it's great because that challenges me as a professional to be thinking about my understanding and my knowledge and going back and looking at it. So it, the, the kind of the issues that people think that you might have on a, a plant-based diet, do you see when people have a poor, you know, um, you know, omnivorous diet? You know, really good question. I've never seen an athlete that I've worked with, whether it be professional cyclists, whether it be any sport, anybody that I feel has been compromised because they're not getting sufficient protein. Interesting. And when people think of protein in sport, they think of the muscle. And when they think of the muscle, they tend to think of it on the structural side, as in the size of the muscle, but not necessarily the architecture, what we call the myofibers, the actual muscle fibers. 
Um, but also what's really important in there is things like the mitochondria. And yeah. as, as cyclists, the mitochondria is very important because this is where we are generating the energy, the ATP. And these are all proteins. The body is believed to turn over the protein, all our protein within about a three month period. Sports nutritionists are concerned about protein because am I right in thinking that you, if you have too much protein, you simply either burn it or excrete it? The body's very good at oxidizing, burning the fuel that's a, the, that we give. So if we consume more protein than what we require, the body removes the nitrogen and that carbon skeleton that's left may be then uh, used for energy, may be used for storage. Uh, some of the proteins can be converted directly into carbohydrate. So yeah, the, the body will use it as a fuel. Right, Nigel, that has been absolutely fascinating. Now, talking about the meals that you cook, uh, we're actually gonna have a couple of Nigel's meals coming up on the channel very soon. Uh, and indeed, some more tips on how to be a meat-free athlete, because uh, undoubtedly there's gonna be many people watching this that are gonna wanna learn. Um, just before we go, uh, this book in front of us uh, is Nigel's very own book, so Fueling the Cycling Revolution. So. Tell us in a nutshell, nice, no pun intended. Uh, what, uh, genuinely no pun intended, um, what can people expect if they're, if they're reading it? This is sort of over 30 years worth of work in, in cycling. Uh, I mean, it goes back to, say, over 30 years ago, supporting my mother riding a 12 hour North Mid time trial where, you know, feeding a rice pudding and then 25 years later doing something very similar with people like Bradley Wiggins and Chris Froome in the Tour de France. Uh, I mean, for people who are interested in meat-free diets, there's recipes in there around that. So the idea with the book, that it talks about some of the technical side of nutrition, uh, it talks about some of the pro stories, what we do in the pro world, and then it provides some recipes for people as well. So I've tried to make it as complete as, as what I can. Fantastic. Right, now, if you're not already getting involved in the comments section right now, I suggest you head down there, because undoubtedly uh, there's going to be some healthy debate underneath this one. Uh, do make sure you subscribe to GCN as well before leaving this video. And if you want to check out a couple of our other nutrition-based videos, you can get through to them just down there or just down there.